Hi there, this is Dr. Justin Marcajani, and today's talk is going to be on detoxification, Detox 101. So first off, let's go into what is detox. Well, essentially, your body is detoxifying all the time. So the fact that we're putting someone through a detox and they're detoxifying then is kind of a misnomer because you're always detoxifying. Now, there are ways that we can upregulate detoxification so we can enhance the body's ability of excreting toxins out the body's um, main detoxifying systems, which would be the skin, the kidneys or the urine, as well as the gut and the breath as well. So let's go into detail on what detoxification is from a biochemical level. So first off, detoxification, we're going to keep it pretty simple. There's three main phases of detoxification. There's phase one and phase two. In the science literature, they talk about phase three, but we're going to keep it down actually two phases here, just phase one and phase two. So let's keep it simple. What's happening in phase one? We are taking fat-soluble toxins right here, FS for fat-soluble. This could be bisphenol A. This could be various chemicals in the environment. We're taking these fat-soluble toxins, and we're turning them into water-soluble toxins. So what's happening here is we're putting these toxins through various phases known as oxidation, reduction, hydrolysis, a few more, but just to keep it really simple. And we're basically converting these fat-soluble toxins into water-soluble toxins in phase two via sulfation, methylation, acetylation, etc. There's more as well, but those are just kind of the key phases that are happening. So we're taking these fat-soluble toxins into water-soluble toxins. So one of the analogies I give my patients is think of when you're detoxifying. Imagine putting a whole bunch of banana peels or orange rinds or apple cores down the dishwasher, down the... Um, the garbage disposal, right? You put them in there, you try running the water, well, it's clogged, right? Because all that's in the garbage disposal. You try grinding it up, right? You grind it up, that kind of liquefies all of the, the cellulose from the plant matter. And then when you turn the water on, it can flush all of those toxins down the drain into the trash. So that's kind of what's happening here in phase one and phase two. Phase one is like taking the garbage disposal and turning it on, right? It gets all of those cores and and outside skins or the orange rinds and such, it liquefies them. So then in phase two, when we turn that water on, right, we're able to then eliminate all those debris down the drain. Now, for some reason, if we don't do a good job in phase one, if we don't really take these fat-soluble toxins and liquefy them well, and if we don't do a good job of excreting them here, this can actually be more of a mess, right? Imagine those orange peels and stuff in the drain, right? They're not fully liquefied. And then if we start running phase two and we don't have these things ready, well, that's actually gonna clog the drain and make the mess a whole lot worse. So we wanna make sure these toxins are go from fat soluble state, phase one, into water soluble. And then during phase two, we're turning on the water, we're flushing all of those toxins out. Now these reactions, they're actually required to have protein, right? Protein is vital for detoxification to occur. And if we look at some of like our main antioxidants that help with detoxification, we're going to see a couple known as glutathione or superoxide dismutase. But glutathione is a big one. Glutathione is actually made up of three amino acids, cysteine, glutamine, and glycine, all protein-based. So we need amino acids to run our detox pathways. That's very, very important. And you can see our body will then rid a lot of these toxins primarily via the stool and the urine. So very important, we wanna make sure our gut function is working properly. So let's delve a little bit deeper into gut function. So detox in the gut, why is it important? It's because we have our gallbladder and liver, right? So our gallbladder would actually be a little green thing just underneath the liver. The liver is gonna produce various bile. That bile then is gonna concentrate here in the gallbladder, and that bile then will be spit out into the intestinal tract. That bile goes into the small intestine, the large intestine, and then into the toilet, if you will. So what's actually happening here is we're taking all of these toxins, a fair amount in the stool, they're going from the gallbladder to the bile, out into the stool, and out into the toilet seat. So for some reason, if our gut's not working because we have dysbiosis, it's not working because we're chronically constipated, this is gonna cause a process known as auto-intoxication, where this process here 
is going to be slowed down and affected, and this is actually going to create more toxicity. This is actually going to feed back and create more toxins over here. So you can see that it's actually creating more problems because we have slow transit time because our bacteria in our gut, we have this bacteria known as glucuronidase, and glucuronidase can actually take a lot of uh, toxins that are bound up by bile, right? We conjugate bile, we take bile, and we bind it to a toxin or a hormone. And beta-glucuronidase, if our bacteria in our gut's out of balance, if we have more bad bacteria, beta-glucuronidase will uncleave a lot of these conjugated toxins, and that actually causes this problem. It creates more toxicity here. So gut function is really important, right? We don't want dysbiosis. We want good bacteria. We want higher amounts of good bacteria, and we want lower amounts of bad bacteria. Now most people are actually flipped. Most people are going to be here, higher on the bad and lower on the good. We want the opposite. We want right there. So that's very important. So let's talk about detoxifying, detoxifying tests. Well in conventional medicine we have our typical test, which are going to be run like on a CBC or a CMP known as your ALT, your AST, and your GGT. So specifically, ALT tends to be a little more focused to the liver. Um, AST is still a liver marker, but there's various isoenzymes that can be broken down from these. You may see them go high in a heart attack. You may see them go high if you have a really hard CrossFit workout. But again, outside of those type of issues, if they're chronically high, it's a good sign it's a detoxification or I should say a liver problem. The only problem is these things tend to be elevated chronically very late in the game, right? Very late in the game. Again, full liver issue, full liver capacity is at uh, 100%. If we drop down, let's say to 10, 20%, that's where you're going to start to see these elevating. So there's a big gap in function between when these start to go high. So they're a late stage indicator in the game of toxicity. GGT is a good marker for gallbladder issues, right? Think of G and GGT for gallbladder. This tends to go high with gallbladder issues. This is going to be liver. This is liver, but this is, tends to be more focused towards liver. Now, we have functional ranges for these. When they go above 20 or so, we start to look at those detoxifying pathways a little more. Also, organic acids tend to be a little more specific because they, they are significant of different nutrients, right? If we're looking at acetylation or sulfur, we're thinking more sulfur-based amino acids, uh, 2-methylhipparate, glucuronidate, they can be specific more of B vitamins and such. So they give us really good indicators of what pathways aren't working properly, and then we can put people on specific supplement programs to help upregulate pathways that are low or out of balance. And again, of course, anytime we're trying to detoxify, we want to just stop putting toxins into the system. That would mean just eating organic food, drinking enough water, um, sleeping well, managing stress, managing blood sugar, all of those things are a major, major stress on the body. So if we can just do the diet and lifestyle things first, that's the first thing. And then second thing is if we have stressors or gut infections, we want to address gut infections because infections will throw off bacteria in the gut. And if bacteria in the gut is off, right? That's going to create this whole backup here in the small intestine and large intestine and really start to increase toxins here and create a vicious cycle. So looking at blood can be helpful. Not the best functional indicator though, but the organic acid testing tends to be the best indicator when we're looking at detoxifying function and there's actually actionable items we can take from that. So again, this is Dr. Justin here signing off. Check below the video for more ways you can get in touch with me. And if you feel like you're having a detoxifying or detox issue, feel free and reach out, schedule the consult, and we can go over what your options are. Thanks. Have a great day.